Time now to talk to our professionals. And joining us today, Dr. Don Carpenter, the host of the Dr. Don on the Morning Show on 99.5 WYCD. Marlon Page, a speaker and technology strategist. And Jason Hall, the co-founder of Slow Roll Detroit at Detroit Bike City. Thanks for being with us, guys. Thank you. Thank By the you. way, we've got to give you a quick plug. You've got a, tele a radiothon going on on your station. It's the week of well. radiothons, isn't it? It is. It is. <laughs> it's it the is. season of giving. You're yeah. helping St. Jude, yeah. and you guys were really rocking it this morning with some very Thanks so much for helping stories. with your tweet. I saw a lot of yeah, people we, retweeted that, so the phone number was out there. So, yeah, we appreciate it. Appreciate everybody in the Motor City giving us some help. Cool. Let's do our first hot topic. Uh, lame duck legislation has been uh, busy. Uh, one thing the Senate has approved is a pilot program that would be in three counties counties to drug test welfare recipients. Now this would be a suspicion based drug testing and recipients could lose benefits for failing more than one test. Supporters say the law is to stop people from using government assistance inappropriately. Do you agree with this? I saw some shaking heads over here. Let's start with you, Jason. <laughs> you want to start with Because I, I saw you uh, what? Yeah, let's start with you. <laughs> well, you know, first of all, I don't like the way suspicion based right. sounds. Okay, yeah, so what makes you suspicious? Right, if we're going to test I feel like let's just test. It is kind of like, a, I mean, any job you would test for. Mm -hmm. So if you're receiving a paycheck, I mean, I feel like it's okay to maybe test. But I, like I said, I just don't like suspicion-based Like if you're going to do it, do it all across yeah, the board. Yeah. Don't just say, hmm. Yeah, yeah. How do you, random test. But yeah, there's also an random. incentive random. component here, which is you can get those benefits back if you enter a drug treatment program. So is there a, a, a smart element to this as well? Because it will take these folks that do have a problem and get them the treatment they need. No, I think there's no smart element to this. I think it's deplorable. And, and the reason I say it's deplorable, when you really look into what they're trying to do, they, they didn't even pass the piece that says if someone's parent is suspected of drugs and they take them off of their benefits, how are the children supposed to eat? Mm -hmm. So this was introduced as well, but they shot it down. So what about the babies? Mm -hmm. So because of that, I can't believe that there's anything good about this. Okay. So it's incomplete. It is 100% incomplete. Yeah. How can you pilot something that's incomplete? Should there be something, is there any part of it that you would like to be instituted? No, not right now. Anything. Only because if you aren't looking out for the children, then what are you really doing? So I'm a little suspicious. What is this really about? Don't, okay. don't talk to me about the numbers and everything else. We have to feed the babies. Okay, Dr. Don? Only thing I can go is I was talking to my neighbor, uh, Big Mo T, <laughs> before I uh, came into this thing today, and he said, what if it's not your drugs? Say you're walking along downtown and Charlie Sheen happens to buy and says, hey, let's all go party. So you go to his place and then, you know, well, there's you a, fail. A guilt by association. Exactly. It's like, well, you didn't spend any welfare money on the drugs because Charlie Sheen brought, bought you the drugs, so you, should you be punished for that? Yeah, you're still doing drugs. You know what I mean? But Whoever right. bought the I wasn't, drugs. I, mean, I wasn't serious. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> It was, it was interesting to see the yeah. whole on Jason. Right? I fell for it. I mean, uh, I'm still thinking about, you know, it, yeah. I understand where you're coming from. It's about the kids. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, parents got to take responsibility, but, but man. Jason, you some, know? Children, some children do not have parents who take responsibility. Right. We don't get to choose our parents. But here's an opportunity for these and kids that's to... that's we get in a better situation. Yeah. Get kids in but a they better don't situation. eat. But they we do eat. need to they find a way to get these folks Well, sure, they eat once you get them into treatment. The idea is to get the parents... Because you know what? Kids being brought up by drugged out parents. Seriously. And if this is an opportunity, instead of like playing the restricting, not going to give you your welfare, is this a, if this is an opportunity to get them into a rehab situation, then that works out better for so the kids So I'm not saying that it's not a bad, it's a bad idea. I'm saying right now, work out the process. Okay. Meanwhile, my so neighbor's texting me. Can we move from illegal drugs to legal drugs? <sighs> there's yeah, a, there's, this a, there's, there's yeah, this is an interesting <laughs> one. Interesting. Last night, the state senate passed a bill that would allow some bars and restaurants in central city areas, so central business districts, uh, to stay open until 4 a.m. on the weekend. They would pay ten thousand uh, dollars. The fee would go to help the local police. Now, this is again for major downtown businesses. The idea is it helps those clubs downtown become more competitive. Of course, opponents say you're just letting the drunks get drunker and then you're sending them out on the roads. Uh, Doc? Not at a bar that's going to have to pay a thousand bucks for these licenses. You know, it's going to be a higher end sort of thing. It's not going to be every bar. I don't think it's going to be that sort of a situation. And in places where I've seen this work, it's more about when that two o'clock 
last call comes, people start slamming things mm -hmm. back and you send people out onto the street with mm -hmm. like five drinks under their belt, or 20 minutes later, that really starts to hit home. This way, eh, ease off a little bit. I'd rather see somebody at least be able to stay in the bar, even though maybe not being served for a couple more hours. As it is now, the bar has to close. You've got to send them out. One of the other goals is, is you get rid of these blind pigs that are operating illegally that yes. also contribute to a lot of problems in the city. You guys on board with this? 4 a.m. for last call? Yes, I am. You I'm like it? I like I'm it. Surprise! I hang Marcus. every now, every now and then. I hang out. Oh, I know you do. Usually, I, I see your Facebook post. Every now and then. Every now and then. Every now and then. And you know, I just, just, we were saying back in the day, at, at two o'clock, you'd have to go to White Castle or uh -huh. Coney Taco Island. Bell. Now right. you get to stay at the restaurant. I am so for this. But what about <laughs> Mothers Against Drunk Driving and, and the resources that now tax dollars are going to go for more increased patrols and things like that? The other side of it. Well, I thought they were just saying that some of this money was going to go towards the infrastructure. Some of it, so, but I mean, many times they'll say it's, there's never enough money. As we, yeah, know. Well, they're always going to say there's never enough I money. I think if it I closed think, at midnight, they stay. Wasn't. I think if we look at other cities that are staying up till four, you know, your mm -hmm. Chicago's, your New Yorks, and things like that. If I think if we look at how they jumped. Are people getting in more accidents in Chicago and New York? I don't think so. I think they, that the infrastructure has just changed to make things different. But if you had mass transit in the infrastructure, that would that make Well, that's what we're working towards. You know I'm just I mean? happy because if you think I look good at 2 o'clock in the morning, you're going to look hot at 4. He's going to be a superstar. Oh, he, he always gets what handsome at closing time. Yeah. Yeah. So let's push that closing yeah. time as far down as yeah. possible. And be like 7 a.m. My name's Dr. Dog. <laughs> okay, last topic. Finally, a mom from Southern Utah has canceled Christmas for her children. Hit us up right now on Twitter. Let us know what you think. For months, she says she has tried to teach them they're not entitled to things like toys. And you know what? The message just wasn't getting through. So she says she's going to decorate. They're going to celebrate. They'll be able to get presents from extended family, like grandparents and aunts and uncles. But on Christmas morning, uh-uh. They're going to wake up and they're going to have some family time and just uh, spend time together. I love it. I, you do? I, well, you know, these kids today, man. I've finally, finally crossed that threshold of these kids, kids these today. <laughs> these kids, these kids, kids today, man. Sometimes you got to send that message. And, you know, I've met some kids that, that really would deserve something from that message. I guarantee sent, you they're so. going to learn a lesson on that mm -hmm. that time. But some people think she's gone too far. Come what do you on. think, Mark? I don't think she's gone too far. Matter of fact, I like to discuss this with my child when I get home. <laughs> well, you know, why not? Let's do something for someone else. Mm -hmm. You get something. Right. She gets something all the time. So I think that this is a great thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't understand the hoopla behind it, actually. What? Are what? you out of your mind? <laughs> what? Well, first of all, how old are these kids? Because if they're like 30, I get it. Well, you know, yeah. but... Uh, no, they're, I think, I, I can't recite the ages, but I think they were all under like 10. I see two sides to this. Five, eight, and eleven. Like you were saying, if the kids are being brats and stuff, you know, the punishment is kind of nice. I also see the, hey, look what we're teaching kids with Christmas. Bribery is a good thing. If you leave milk and cookies out for Santa, you get more stuff. I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, you could take it to that extreme. But I mean, you know, if these kids are, are younger, do you really want to deprive them of the magic that is that is Christmas? I mean, it's a very magical time. There's a lot of memories. There's a lot of fun. There's a lot of happy. Mm -hmm. And if it's there's a lot of spiritual involved, you know, and it it's shouldn't all be all about presents, but at the same time, you know, there's a lot of good, there's a lot of happiness that gets instilled. It in shouldn't people. be about punishment. Well, grandpa, no, I mean, the grandparents are still getting, I mean, they're getting gifts from the extended yeah. family. I mean, it's just their immediate, immediate family. Families, you're not going to wake you know? up with a pile yeah. of gifts. I'm surprised. You're really nice. I thought you were, yeah. yeah. What's up with that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Doctor, doctor. I would not guess they were so. Oh, that's great. Right. We thought you were the Bah Humbug yeah. guy. Nope. Don't tell me. <laughs> I'll own that one. I'm not going to have coal in my stocking <laughs> like somebody. <laughs> oh, Jason, Marlon, Dr. Don, we appreciate it. Thank you so much, Rev. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Next on Live in the Day, we're going to eat.